What's up, suckers? Got a nice shot of my downstairs while I was working on this. Um, it is a gorgeous day here in Costa Rica. Uh, it is hot as balls. I am hanging out here uh, letting my children play Minecraft because bribery is the ultimate sign of good parenting. Um, <laughs> And uh, I'm really excited to be here with you guys today because I have a friend who is going to be showing up to talk with me in a little bit. Wanted to just fill you guys in on a few things here on Instagram. I am about to release a YouTube channel starting hopefully this Friday and that YouTube channel will be helping people who need a little bit, who want to learn to be productive without sacrificing their mental health and their personal comfort. Um, because I am coming from a place uh, where I'm dealing with ADHD and uh, chronic fatigue, either because of that ADHD or God knows what. I totally and completely get what it's like to want to get shit done, but also kind of feel like you just don't have the energy or uh, the control to do so or the time. And I've gotten pretty good at time management and pretty good at putting things together. So I am helping people out with that. Um, I'm sure that you guys have already seen also on Instagram that, you know, I do digital business consulting, which is essentially helping businesses that are mainly online um, figure out the best way to do things, whether that's finding new software or fixing up a process or workflow that they use. And I just kind of feel like these two things meld really well because if there's one thing ADHDers really tend to struggle with a lot, it's um, figuring out the best process and prioritizing. And I've been doing a lot of work with that and I think I've gotten a pretty good handle on it. So uh, that's where that's gonna be coming from. And I will have some classes going on later on this year. So, you know, if you want to be a part of that, feel free to subscribe already. If you're not interested in subscribing right now, just keep an eye out. There will be videos starting probably, like I said, this Friday for you to watch. Um, and for those of you who are going to be checking in today, you're kind of wondering what uh, we're going to be talking about. I have, I, uh, I'm honored. I'm going to be seeing my friend Tatiana Denford. She is a, an author, a hilarious human being, just an amazing human all around. And I'm going to have her here with me and we are going to talk about the struggles that creatives have during the pandemic. Um, it's been something of a mess, you know. You, you really, honest to God, wind up having to do a lot of planning and a lot of thinking and a lot of creative work um, by yourself, you know, um, one thing that a lot of us tended to get our, our inspiration from was leaving the house and going out and you really don't get that as much right now. So we're going to be bitching about that and probably a number of other things, which I'm extremely excited about because this is the first time actually that she and I are going to have spoken voice to voice. We have spoken multiple times, um, by DM and through Twitter, but we've never actually gotten a, a chance to talk to each other um, voice to voice, like together. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it, you know, kind of makes me realize we've come a very long way from the days of LOL where, LOL? AOL, where it was like, you had AOL Instant Messenger and you know, you constantly had your parents kind of like freaking out about you being friends with people over the internet because you never really knew whether or not they were like actually who they said they were or they were just trying to lure you to a park to take you in a windowless van. So it's kind of really different now in that Tetiana uh, is somebody who I am excited to meet and who I am excited to get to know uh, or get to actually speak with. I should say I've, I've gotten to know her pretty well by now. Um, but I haven't gotten a chance to actually, you know, speak with her. Um, and it's just kind of amazing to actually get a chance to, to do that. And she's the second person who I'm speaking to voice to voice for the first time via Instagram, but who I've been friends with for a while. So 
Um, Tatiana is here, so let's go ahead and get her up here. Tatiana, go ahead and request to join, girl. <gasps> Carla, what's up, girl? I miss you. I miss your face. Carla is uh, one of my good friends here in Costa Rica. She's actually kind of like family, and I'm constantly trying to complain to her that she needs to come move uh, to be closer to me. So, you know, if you've got a moment to like tell her that she should be listening to me, she should uh, totally do what I say and move to be closer to me. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see. Here we go. I am able to get Tatiana in here. Just invited her to join me. Hi! It's you! <laughs> it's you! Oh my god! Yes. Finally! Hi! Hi! How are you? I'm, I'm better now. I was just talking about how you and I have not gotten to actually speak voice to voice and that this is the first time we're getting a chance to do this. Have so, we never, have we never even sent ourselves a, a, like each other a voice note? Even nope, nope. Wow, we're 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 both good friends and shitty friends because that's yeah. that's how that works. <laughs> I yeah, feel like no. we're on a, I feel like I feel like we're on a date. Well, except this would be like the weirdest date ever because there's people watching. But yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> um, it's it's funny though because um, I had mentioned you know that we met like online. But what I always thought was really funny is that the first thing that grabs me is how alike our names are. Like, oh, that's like, you made, like you made me laugh, you know, because I remember it was on Twitter and you responded in such a way that it made me laugh. And then I was like, her name is Tatiana Denford and she's responding to Ariana Bradford. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, is this one of those things where like if we were in kindergarten, we would have realized our names were really similar and then like just been best friends forever on the playground just based off of that one tiny detail. Oh, and it turns out, it turns out, yes, it turns out absolutely. I, I never knew anyone with a name that was similar to mine. So that would have been great. All I knew are like, were like James and Jessica. Yeah. Sarah's. Je and Jessica's, Brittany's, Jennifer's. Yeah. So. This is, this is the first time I've met somebody whose name is this similar to mine. And it is, it is, it is quite neat if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> so before we get into our bitch fest here, why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and tell everybody, well, really anything about yourself you're interested in sharing? Let's see. Um... How do I do a quick summary? Okay, so um, I am an author. I am a translator. Um, I am Ukrainian. A um, uh, little bit of backstory. I published my first um, novel, a historical fiction novel, in 2020 or 19. Actually, I'm kind of with this pandemic. It's just really kind of it's all uh, blended into itself. Yeah, buzzing my brain. Um, but that was my my first novel. I wrote it for four years. I kind of I've always been writing on and off. I've done freelance writing. I've done translating for various different languages for different publications and stuff. But I really kind of wanted to write a book, and I did, and it got a lot of good responses from the industry from agents and stuff. But historical fiction is sometimes a hard sell because the story has to fit into a certain mold. Um, and I was just not interested in that. So I decided to self-publish and I, I did it very successfully. And then uh, on the back of that, uh, I started writing uh, collections of poetry and prose on different themes. Um, and that resonated really well. And those have been doing really well. So now um, I am a self-published author. I love it. Um, I'm, you know, uh, I'm going to develop... I am in the process of developing, I'll tell you about this later, but I'm in the process of developing self-publishing um, and kind of industry courses on, you know, how people can kind of understand what path is right for them. And, you know, uh, so anyway, so that's that. And what else? I am very unfiltered. I am interested and curious in the world. I can be a little bit political, um, you know, uh, I just, and what you see is what you get. I am no, I am somebody that does not have an agenda. Um, you know, that's I, it. Yeah. 
I'm not. Which I'm is not... which is part of why I enjoy you so. <laughs> it's not. Do you know what? And the funny, I am really grateful for this, but but so many strangers kind of reach out to me and tell me their deepest, darkest secrets. Why? Uh, this happens to me in real life. And I think it's because they know that I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to use information against people. I'm not interested in that. Like, you know, I, I am living a life that is completely authentic to who I am and what I want to do. And, you know, if I can be there for somebody, then I like doing that. So, you know. And that's important, right? Like, Honestly, I have found that no matter what you're doing, right, if you run a business, if you're writing, even as a person, it's just, just just in daily life, it's a lot more exhausting not living true to yourself. And yeah. I used to be afraid to say that out loud because especially since, you know, I, I speak from a place of expertise and I tend to want to like, you know, teach and, and stuff like that. I'm always afraid that I'm going to say that and somebody is going to use my words as license to be a complete asshole. But then I'm like, you know what? If you being an asshole is true to yourself, then go ahead and be an asshole and you'll find other assholes, but they'll take you off my hands and then I don't have to deal with you. So that, that you know, I've <laughs> kind of seen the positive and just being like, yeah, just be true to you, man. And if being true to you means that you're a total chode, then at least you can go be true someplace else and I don't have to deal with you. Well, the thing is, is that, that that, like you said, like it can be applied to any kind of business, but in particular, um, people who are creatives and who are writing, I think it's super important. Because, it is. Because the only way um, I think people will uh, um, engage with your work and mm -hmm. your is when you bring a very consistent energy. And 100%. If, if, it's, if you're constantly showing up and saying and being true to your work with, without like, you know, panicking about what everybody's gonna think and how many people engage and how much money you're gonna make, if that's consistent, then that's what people trust. And I think right. that sometimes is missing in the creative world because people are really, and it's a, because it's a really emotive thing to do if you do it well. You're mm -hmm. constantly just like, uh, you're putting yourself out there. You're essentially, yeah. so it's funny that you brought up the reason why you self published because that was why I self published because my book is very sweary and I was, you know, I, I'm thinking I might try to go the natural, the, not natural, but the like traditional publication route. But I have found. Uh, for my next book. But the first one, I have found that the more people I spoke to, the more people, the more artists, the more creatives are starting to kind of take their own um, image into their hands because they're feeling like I'm not interested in going to a publishing house that's going to tell me that I can't swear as much or that I can't say this or that I can't say that. And I, I think that it's an amazing thing because you really do you really do want to put yourself out there. I don't know a writer who doesn't want to put who they really are out there, which is a terrifying thing because yeah. like you said, you're basically putting yourself out there and you're saying, you know, you're, you're not, not in a desperate way, but you're asking people to tell you whether or not they like you. That's essentially what you're doing is you're just like, hi everyone. What do you think of me? And that's, yeah. And that's terrifying. But at the same time, I think, especially from a creative standpoint, we kind of have this need to put ourselves out there regardless. And so, yeah. you know, we're, we, we, we kind of just take that, like, I've just gotten to the point where I'm just like, I'm just going to try really hard not to read comments <laughs> and opinions past a certain point. Yeah. Cause it's out there. I, I think a lot of people, and it's completely understandable. A lot of, creative people are are super sensitive but also they want to know if they're engaging with people and a lot of times good art will get people re you know really in like you know um god i'm messing up my words today but um it's like they clash a lot you know yeah. divisive that's what i was trying to say divisive and, yeah yeah and but art is like that and i think mm -hmm. you have to step away from that because actually psychologically negative well negative I, you can't be a total asshole and just kind of say i hate this person i wish she'd die but <laughs> fair 
but you know there's a limit but mm -hmm. but when when somebody doesn't engage with your work and offers really like opposite or constructive or critical thinking kind of criticism i think it's healthy i think it's important and psych it is. psychologically actually i read an article once where it says that audiences or you know especially online when they see that something is a little bit polarizing they're actually more intrigued by it absolutely you know? absolutely so if something is across the board oh this is so amazing we love it yeah okay like you might want to buy it and stuff but also i think we as creatives should really be careful to kind of like think that that is the the mark That's, yeah no perfect perfect Perfection is not, success is not necessarily perfection. Yeah. That's, that's just really what it is. It's not necessarily making everybody happy. Sometimes it's, success is just getting people to feel things. And yeah. the, the rough part is it's, it's a thin line, right? Like you even mentioned, like constructive crit has a thin line. There's yeah. a difference between, um, you know, I didn't really like the third chapter because I felt like it kind of took me out of the story and yeah. I think that this entire book moves like my grandma's bowels and I hate it. Like that's, you know, that's just bullshit. Like you're like, that's, that's not constructive criticism. That's you being a legit asshole. So yeah. it's very, it's a very thin line. It's kind of the same with, you know, looking for constructive crit. There is yeah. a difference between, hey, I feel like something's missing. Can you please give me your opinion? Yeah. And going from, I am proud of this work to, four people said that it's trash. So now I hate it. And it's, it's bullshit. So it's, it's a very, it's a very thin line. We walk a tightrope. We really yeah. honest to God do. But what sometimes um, frustrates me mm -hmm. uh, is that the industry knows that they can profit. And I'm not saying that this is malicious, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that the industry knows that they can profit on a creative's need mm -hmm slight insecurity absolutely it's much easier in a lot of ways to go the traditional route but you have to really ask yourself there's going like what am i comfortable sacrificing mm -hmm. yes like, absolutely yep am I, am I going for the clout the, mm -hmm. the the press releases the book tours all of that is amazing productive hell yeah like yeah I, I would absolutely say yes to all of that mm -hmm. but if I am not sure if they want to change, you know, what I am writing or what I'm about in order to fit a certain, you know, bottom line and mm -hmm. sales kind of directive and all of that, uh, you know, it's hard because you want to say yes, because you want to be in the crowd. You want to mm -hmm. be in, but also- You want to be legit. Because a lot of yeah. people still believe that if you're self-published, you're not legit. Self-publishing is still, there's a stigma to it. And I think there's the stigma is that self-published authors wear cardigans and sit in the basement and put their books together like a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and no, see, <laughs> see, so what I've gotten from it, from listening to people talk about self-publishing is that they, they, there's a low, bar, bar, bo, low, low barrier of barrier of entry Sorry, yeah. I cannot talk today. It's a low barrier of entry. They feel like, you know, it'll let anybody in. Yeah. But, and no offense to anybody who's read this, read these books, but like, objectively, I feel like Fifty Shades of Grey is, is a bad book. And that got approved to be a movie, for Christ's sake. So just being allowed into that in crowd, into that legit group, does not automatically make your art which you know we could totally get into that whole philosophical because I think every artist and creative has had this argument about when do you become legit when are you an artist versus a hobbyist when are you a writer versus just a person who likes to write and nobody ever can come up with an agree and an agreement on that but I think with Fifty Shades what's interesting is that that was absolutely a market and a business decision like they knew that she hit on something that a lot of women were looking for. And same with the Twilight books. Oh, God. They, <laughs> Please. There's a very specific, that is an easy read. And yeah. a lot of people love that. And it was made into movies because they are looking at it as a business and going, fair. you know That's what? That's fair. 
and absolutely be now um you know i think the thing the difference is i think you you know when you self publish yeah you can any anybody can you can mm -hmm. you can put a book where you have together and use amazon's cover creator for mm -hmm. free and you can mm -hmm. put it together and put one word on every page and publish a hundred pages of the word yes. Oh, uh, you made me snort. That's awesome. You know, <laughs> That's a fantastic call, plan. And call yeah. it the book, the book of yes, the book of positivity. Yeah. And some people will buy, we'll buy it. it. Yep. Now, here's the, here's, I think, and if that's, and if somebody creates that, considers that art, great. Where, where I think, where I think the difference is, what I want to impart, I think, maybe to people and empower them with, is that there's a way to make self-publishing really cool and mm -hmm. fun and rock and roll mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like the way to present it, as long as you have the energy for it and the commitment to do that. And I think because it's a lot of peddling. It is, it's a lot of, it's a lot of self-work. Yeah, it is. And but, it, but you, you know what I think is bizarre, though, is that people are all about independent musicians, independent, yeah. uh, independent artists will be like, oh, I was into that band way before they were pop. Like, th that's cool. If yeah. you're an independent musician, if you are, you know, a small business, like a local mom and pop, like, coffee shop, people yeah. support that. But the moment that you're like, yeah, I'm a self-published author, their immediate response is, oh, so you suck and you couldn't get anybody to invest in your dream. And it's like, hold the fucking phone. Do you know yeah. how much money Macklemore made? He is independent, 100% independent. I don't know if he still is. I haven't really read up on him in a while. But the dude was making a ridiculous amount of money yeah. as an independent rapper. And nobody was like, eh, this, guy, this guy obviously blows. Like... Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's really no difference. There are some people out there who have the talent and either don't want to sacrifice something, like you said, about who they are. Yeah. Or they don't have the, let, let's, let's face it, like some of these people who have rocketed stardom, a big part of it is who they know. So they don't have the connections or the resources. Yeah. And some people are just impatient. And they're like, I wanted this book out in a year and it's taken me two years to find an agent. So guess what? I'm doing it myself. Like yeah. there are so many different reasons besides, uh, you know, I, I'm, I want to write my manifesto before I commit a, tr an act of treason. Like there could be a different reason, by the way, there actually are manifestos <laughs> posted <laughs> as self-published books of wow. people before they killed like people and it's 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 a very odd sub market on amazon oh i was i was like there's a market for this all right i, I don't know how to live there us. market for everything the other there. day i saw a collection of books based on a woman falling in love with the coronavirus <laughs> what <laughs> were they <laughs> were they like erotic novels or like what what was this yes oh. yeah she has made lots of money People love it. Seven I'm kind of kind of mad I never came up with that. 700 plus reviews. What? The what? <laughs> 700. What am I doing with my life? Do you know, you, I'm, scra I'm scrapping my whole like upcoming, like the YouTube channel. All of it's coming down and all I'm going to do is write erotic novels about people falling in love with complete bullshit. <laughs> uh, coming out this summer, guys. Sharon you know, and the Shrub. What's I expect money. Don't. Sorry. <laughs> don't under don't underestimate the industry this is the no. thing now Fair. and you i actually got to a point when i was submitting and i got like i said i was so lucky i got lots of great responses i am friends with a lot of these agents now and it's so lovely and they offer so much support and advice and stuff and at one point i remember thinking you know what if historical fiction isn't going to go anywhere how about i write an erotic novel because i am thinking as somebody who has imposter syndrome every day, like we all do, I'm thinking, I'm comparing. The comparison is, is the thief of everything. It is. The and thief of I, joy. I started saying, oh, well, if E.L. James can do it, so can I. I tried. I cannot authentically write. I can't either. Novel. I can't write romantic comedy either. It's just mm -mm. not my voice. And I thought, nope. 
what's the I point? think you and I could get together and write a good bullshit erotic novel. Oh my like, god. Like, like oh. where we purposely like misuse certain terms for gen genitalia and like these people say like stupid shit to each other as like I guarantee <laughs> you we could write a really good purposely bad erotic novel. I don't know who would buy it, but I think we could do it. I <laughs> You know what? Like we said, there's a market for everything. There's a market for everything. But I, I think especially now, uh, seeing, you know, how the industry is being kind of ripped apart with certain inclusivity issues mm -hmm. and uh, books written by certain authors that are very, very um, aggressive with their terms when it comes to racism and mm -hmm. otherism. So, like, I think a lot of people are saying whilst big publishing industry is is fine and they do publish, like, you know, really good books, I think they are starting to question why everybody feels that that might be the only legitimate path for them, you know? I get because, it. Because it's a, it's a lot of it. And this is no disrespect to so many people I know, and they are wonderful and they work really hard, but a lot of it is an old school white boy industry. I mean, it, it, it is, it really, really is. Um, you know, the unfortunate thing is that we get very caught up on how things have always been done. Yeah. And a lot of us, you know, it's kind of like that, that old story about the, the monkey experiment. Do you remember that one? Have you heard that one? So I don't know if this is true or not. It could be an urban legend. But they say that, like, there was a cage full of monkeys, and they hung a banana from the middle of the, the – they being scientists or whatever. Right. And what they would do is every time that a monkey would go for the banana, they would spray the monkeys with a hose until all of the monkeys learned not to go for the banana. Then what they did is they opened the cage and they would take one of the old monkeys out and put a new monkey in. And the new monkey would try to go for the banana. And then all the other monkeys would pull that, that monkey back and teach it not to go after the banana. They did this over and over until no monkey in that cage had been sprayed and they were all new monkeys. But what they had learned from the old group was not to go for the banana. They had no idea why. They had just been told not to. Oh. And so now, again, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is just one of those, like, you know, uh, one of those, like, things that they use for motivation. But, but that I... Sense, but that's how humans work. We are. We 100% are just stuck on how things work. Like, even if you look at how hard the U.S. is fighting against changing the work week. Right? Like there are companies that are like, hey, listen, we've done, you know, four day work weeks and we've seen a rise in productivity. And there are still a ton of companies that are like, nah, Monday through Friday is the way to go. And if you ask them why, they don't really have an answer. No. It legit is just because that's how we've always done it. And it's the same, like you said, it's this idea that like, well, we've always read published authors, published authors, like conventionally published authors have always been the way to go. And it's like, but why? Why? Because we've always done it that way? You know what? Why? And actually, if you dig a bit into history, there are a lot of famously published authors that initially self-published. I, right. I wish I could give you examples, but they're like big people, you know? Um, and yeah. Now, I'm talking about like in the early 1900s even, you know? So I, what, I, what I really want, and I get, I get so much joy and energy out of telling people you have something really special you have something so wonderful you, you can legitimately carry it yourself yes it's a lot of legwork but you know traditional publishing is not the only way it's a wonderful mm -hmm. way if you have certain restrictions on your life mm -hmm. or you can't you know in my in my courses like I've actually um I've updated my website so it actually has a tab up there that you can sign up so that I can you know just send me your email and then I'll keep you updated but there's mm -hmm. like a little thing that you can print out and it says is self-publishing right for me mm -hmm. and it basically says there's not one isn't better than the other necessarily but it depends on like three things whether you have, like it's about control, marketing, and money and time. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, 
if you want control over your own work and you want to feel like, you know, every aspect, which is a lot, you know, you have to edit your own stuff. You have to read it out loud. You have to have other find people. your own beta readers. You have to. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, you don't have a team of people doing this for you. You don't get to send in your manuscript and have them kind of be a sounding board. You mm -hmm. have to find all these avenues yourself. Control mm -hmm. of your own work is a really big thing. It's hugely wonderful, you know, but it's very time consuming. Exactly. You know? The marketing, you have to like, it's for me, I love it. I, I like doing the marketing and like publicity, I guess you could call it for my book. I like learning how to create little, you know, um, posts like on Canva and using kind of all this stuff to make Twitter banners and updates and using animation and all that. Again, it's really time consuming but I like it. I like engaging with people. Like mm -hmm. someday I hope to do virtual events and you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then money and time, you know, you have to save up a bit to hire a book designer. Personally, I think like, because you, you have to judge a book by its cover. You mm. know, that is true. That is 100% true. And I, I, I think we are so, especially because we've been trying to create stuff while the world world is on fire. <laughs> Creatives are so tired and we are so tired of not only motivating ourselves, but motivating other people. They turn to us for our, our words and our work and stuff. I can completely understand why somebody's going to go, I don't have the energy or the time to figure out self-publishing. I'd rather somebody help me. I, and it's, yeah, I it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of emotional work. It's a lot yeah. of mental work. And especially when you are dealing with, um, you know, heaven forbid sickness, or you're dealing with, you know, bad news, which can be very uh, emotionally draining. You're working on trying to figure out how your job is going to, you know, my kids have been off uh, in Costa Rica, the school year goes from February to December. So my kids have been off for the last couple months. And trying to work and take care of my kids has been really hard. And that's with them going to school. You have places like my, uh, I used to live in Oregon. Oregon, at least recently, just shut down again um, to the point where kids had to go back home. So imagine that you've got two parents who work. They have these kids that are home, and now they have to try to somehow make sure that they're learning. You've got all of this, and then on top of that, you're trying to keep your creative energy flowing so that you can make something that you want to make. That is, that is a lot. And if you get through all that... I could totally get how someone's like, I don't feel like handling my own marketing. I don't feel like, you know, um, having to look up beta readers or having to edit my own shit. Like I, I, I could get that. I understand that. And there, there's really fucking understandable. It's 100% understandable. And I, I, I am lucky in a way that, you know, I, I can shoehorn some time. Mm-hmm myself even though you know we have our own baggage to deal with and you know of course everybody does yeah um one of the things that i want to tell people like i'm not trying to sorry about um, hi puppy hi doggy yeah um i'm i'm not if you want to just yell if you want to yell shut the fuck up feel free no. it's fine i i'm i'm right i'm you know I, who am i to judge Fine. The thing, the thing that like I discovered about myself is that I want to tell people, you know, if you're going to go this path, there's so many like positives with, you know, self-publishing. One mm -hmm. of the most surprising things to me was that I made money. I made money in the first month yeah. that I self-published. Now it's possible. It is. It, I would never, as an artist, you don't, create with dollar signs in mind ever 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 you know <laughs> no you create something that's authentic to you and something that you're happy with now yeah. can I, I i do want to jump in here and say one thing yeah for anybody who watches the sue is a creative this is true however do not let people use this to guilt you into doing shit for them for free that oh. is one that is one thing like I 100% agree with you and I know that that's not what you're saying but yeah, I know that, that sometimes I, I and I know from per, from uh, my own experience and I know from my friends experience that sometimes people will try to use that 
as a guilt trip and they'll say, Oh, so you're just doing it for the money. And it's like, uh, no, I, I just really like getting paid for my job, you know? So definitely you're right. I just want to make sure that if there's anybody watching that, who sometimes doesn't understand that this is a nuanced topic, don't take that to mean a hundred percent of the time. That means that you shouldn't be getting paid for your work. You absolutely should. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, um, what's interesting is that that, you know, how earlier we were talking about what's the difference between like just making a hobby for yourself mm -hmm. and think about it as a business now, right. very hard or used to be really hard for me to marry the idea of being a writer, mm -hmm. thinking as a businesswoman. Right. Right. And I, in order to, to, to carry my work proudly, I have to put on a business. I have to put on a you business. You have to. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you said that. Your time and your work are, should be valued, not just by you, but you know, you can't give out your work for free. I used mm -mm. to write in the beginning, I used to write lots of articles for a blog zine and that was nice, but they ended up just, you know, they put it on their website and I'm like, okay, that's nice. But at some point, I, I have kind of, I have done a lot of work on how to self-publish and how to write well and like all of these things. And I've learned all these things. And as a businesswoman, I'm going to monetize it because it, if you don't value it, other people won't. It's a really mm -mm. mental thing that happens. It's really wild. If you give away stuff for free, people they don't, will, that, no, no, people will respect it less absolutely and yep. as you value it in a certain time like what is your time worth how do you you know how do you kind of create and it's not because you want to make millions it's because we live in a capitalist society that's not a bad thing no but it you means know, that I've you always... have to be able to live from your job yeah exactly. that's it's that simple so, and, and i yeah as soon yeah. as as soon as you start figuring out what that is worth money wise you'd be surprised how many people are more than happy to pay for work, for content, for, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And if they're not, then they, they didn't deserve you in the first place. They didn't value you in the first place. Yeah. That's very, very, very important. And, you know, I'm really glad that you brought this up because I could go on forever. You know, I've spent my time as a creative, basically almost my entire life when I wasn't, you know, working real world day jobs. I've been a musician. I've been a photographer. I've been a writer. And if there's one thing that I have found is that there is this talking about how we've always done it. There's this romanticized belief that you are somehow cheapening what you do as an artist if you think of what you do as business. And that is absolutely not true. No. If, you want, if you want to get things done, if you want to get paid for what you enjoy, if you want to make sure that you are involved in something that means something to you, like you said, we live in a capitalist society. You have to be able to pay bills. And the only way that you can pay bills is by making money. And it is not mutually exclusive to do yeah. something you love, to love what you're doing, to put yourself into what you're doing and still look at it like, I have to keep my financials in order. I have to keep track of how much it costs me to do this versus how much money I'm making. I have to understand that I can only do X amount of free jobs a year, if any. And if I, you know, I'm gonna have to get good at hurting some people down if they can't afford me. Those are not soulless, that's not heartless, that's business that's life and especially like it's what as soon as i because i used to think that i used to be like well you know i just want to write i just want to like send people stuff that they need i just want to help and whatever yeah. and he, like and it was my husband that who has his own very successful company he was like yeah i don't think that's a very sustainable way forward he goes you <laughs> try and but he's like and as soon as i married the two together as soon as i was like you know what I, I want to create this like kind of like with a business brain, mm -hmm. it felt so empowering. And I feel it like, does. To, especially to women, I feel like saying, stop thinking that you have to like that doing something that you love is a cute little hobby. It's not a hobby. Stop calling it a side. I mean, it could be like a side thing if you've got like another job, but 
so many women call like their their main thing a side hustle yeah, or something cutesy like that and it's like just call my job the language is passive and slightly mm -hmm. apologetic even if they don't mean it to be and i feel like saying all of like when you invest in yourself when mm -hmm. you when you value yourself, not just valuing your art by loving it, but if, if you get satisfaction from making money for some, from something you love, that is rock and roll. That Absolutely. Is yeah. Awesome. Oh. We're going to have to have another talk sometime in the near future about how women have been trained to think of money. Because if women want to get paid for things, man, the vilification is nonstop. It's just like, oh, well, you're greedy and all you care about is money. And it's like, oh, yeah, I love food. So, yeah, I, I actually do like money. It's Meanwhile, free. Meanwhile, men, oh, he's so entrepreneurial. Or, you know, or what bothered me for a long time was that phase where people were like mom boss or mompreneur. And I'm like, that is still passive, like silly, apologetic language. <laughs> are doing yourself a disservice as a woman who is passionate about whatever that passion is you gotta push that give your so the all the only argument i have for that because first off i i do um work with a lot of people who are you know who would call themselves those things i wouldn't call myself that even though i do use those hashtags because you know instagram <laughs> but um <laughs> but what i will say is that i kind of understand from a community perspective, why they use those terms. Okay. Because there is a difference between running a business with and without kids. Um, and, and the difference is wildly just in terms of how the outside world understands what you need. Because there is a lot less of an understanding of why you might be you know, unable to attend last minute or why you might not be able to have childcare or why you may only have certain hours for X, Y, and Z. So I could kind of understand that from a community standpoint. That yeah. being said, I do think it's, a, it's a unfair that they feel like they have to, it's kind of like the same thing with like, you know, I have to mention that I'm a black owned business or a woman owned business. It's like, it shouldn't be that way, yeah. but it kind of is. It has to be that way, you know? So that being said, I, I really do think that I, I agree. I feel like there is an apologetic attitude in terms of how women describe their jobs, describe their attitudes towards money, describe their attitudes towards marketing, towards, you know, being in your face, which for us could just mean that we post about what we do like once a week, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of that and it needs to be fixed. Um, yeah. I will, I will say we are running out of time. So I, we're going to have to do this again. Yes. First off, even, I, I mean, live of course, but you and I also need to try talking more often because this is so yeah. sad that this is the first <laughs> time we've actually spoken to each other face to face. Um, but please tell everyone where they can follow you. Tell them uh, when the classes are and yep. uh, please. Yes. Okay. So I feel like I'm everywhere. Um, so everyone's stuck with me. Um, I am on Twitter at Tatiana Wright. I am on Instagram under the same handle, Tatiana Wright. I have a website, TatianaDenford.com. On that web website is book news. My next book is coming out in a week, two weeks. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's coming out. Any book news is on my website. Also, I have now created a dedicated space that's, that uh, is on my website called is self publishing right for me. Um, and if you go on there, there are the three tenants of what you kind of need to think about, put in your email and sign up. And then once th these courses, um, come out sometime later this year, I don't know what format, probably quick, fun, snack size, uh, video courses, um, that, and I'll go through kind of lots of industry stuff, but also like stuff that, you know, you need to understand about self-publishing the good, the bad, the ins and outs. Um, I am also, uh, I, I have a show called the craft and business of books. Um, it's on YouTube and we basically, um, my partner, Marissa and I, um, she used to be in one of the big fives. Um, she's, 
she is very industry, but she's like super cool. And we interview editors, um, uh, authors, agents, all of the kind of like the fun questions that people want to know about the industry. And um, yeah. And that's how. And, um, and, of, <laughs> and of course, obviously, I will be uploading uh, this video afterwards, as I always do. So if you guys didn't catch any of that, you can always go ahead and just click on her handle. You'll be able to go straight to her page and you'll be able to follow all that. Um, and yeah, this has been so great. I am so glad I finally got a chance to talk to you. Hi. And I, I love you. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> like I... I I'm genuinely like happy that we spoke, but also because you have the kind of energy that changes people's perspectives. And I'm like really honored to, to be connected to you and to that kind of energy because it, I think it really helps. I think it helps people go, you know what? I can do things. I can talk about things, you know, it's nice. Well, that's really sweet of you. Thank you. And when I, when I have those moments of doubt, which I've had, I have people like you to, so yeah. That's, talk, that's, talk to me, talk to Auntie Tatiana. <laughs> I will talk to Auntie Tatiana and she will set me straight. That's why I love her. <laughs> so anyway, love, please take care of yourself today. Everyone, thank you very much for checking in. And I will have that video up for anybody who's missed it. Girl, I love you. We will talk again soon. Bye. Bye, everyone.